Hi everyone, my name is Brian Doe. Um, before I get started, I'd like to thank everyone for being patient with us as we do our screen recording. We know that we're supposed to be there in person to present, but we're actually in sunny California, and so we're actually, you know, spending our time at the beach. I'm just kidding. Um, it's an eight-hour difference between London and where we are in California, so um, so we weren't able to make it from the meeting in person, but we hope that this screen recording is sufficient. Okay, so I'd like to tell you about a project called SherlockNet, where we use convolutional neural networks, which is a form of machine learning, in order to automatically add text through tags and captioning to the one million images in the British Library collection. And I'm working with a team that includes Karen Wang and Luna Zhao. I want to introduce us a little bit before we get started who we are. So I'm in the middle, my name is Brian. Um, I did my bachelor's in CS at Stanford and I'm currently a med student at Harvard and MIT. Uh, Luda Zhao to the left did his bachelor's in CS at Stanford and is currently doing his master's in computer science CS also at Stanford. Karen Wang to the right, bachelor's in CS at Stanford, also currently MS master's in CS at Stanford. So we have connections to Silicon Valley um, and we're all doing very different things. Okay, so again, we're working on captioning and tagging the British Library data set. The British Library data set is very rich, as you guys all know. One million images from many different fields and spanning 400 years. I think when we looked at the data set for the first time, we saw images from between 1530 and 1927. And that's a 400-year gap, 400-year period of time. It's a huge treasure, treasure trove. We can see historians using the images to support their research. Maybe they want to know uh, what was the style of clothing back in the 1700s, or how did, uh, how did architecture look in, uh, in the English countryside in the 1500s versus the 1600s. This data set is one of the most rich, and it's one that could help support their data, <clears throat> their data collection. <clears throat> when we were looking through the data, we identified uh, something interesting. So all these images are tagged by date and location, and they're on Flickr. So if we go on Flickr.com, we can see the page number that they're from, the book that they're from, the date that it was published, the place that it was published. In addition, Flickr also gives a couple of tags. They're small. Um, images from this book number, images from this volume number, it's a drawing. But really, these tags are not very useful. What we want are real content tags. Tags that describe what is inside the image, not tags that describe properties in the image. For example, in this image, we want to know there's a palm tree, there's stairs, there's stone. It's like some sort of garden slash stone terrace. We want to know that. We don't want to know that it's from this book, necessarily. And this poses a huge problem for historians and for anyone who wants to go through the British Library data set. We could spend hours scrolling through the British Library data set to find the image that we wanted, but that is time-consuming and we might not, we would not be able to get through all the million images. Instead, what we want to do is to search for things like Google Images. We want to search for an image that we find interesting and find it. Our solution, or what we wanted to do, was, well, <clears throat> then we'll add words to every single image. For example, like this. We'd have architecture, we'd have maps, we'd have diagrams, objects. But how do we do that? And that was our central problem. So back in... This was back in January, I think January of 2016, we started thinking about this problem in conjunction with the British Library. <coughs> Sorry. And we came up with a couple of possible solutions. One solution, we tag all of them by hand. We tried that for a bit. We got through a thousand images in three hours, meaning for a million images, we'd be spending about 3,000 hours. It's a lot of time. Another solution is actually on Amazon.com. They offer a web service called Mechanical Turk, which is where we outsource tagging to individuals who are highly qualified. People get paid to tag images, 
And if they do a good job, then they keep going. If they don't do a good job, then they sort of are dropped from the project. That's another way to do it, but also time consuming and not automatic. The solution that we found to be the most promising and one that we've started to work on is based on the idea of machine learning. Machine learning is a sort of a catch-all term for any high-level computer algorithm that is able to learn, learn representations over time. So in this case, we feed the machine samples of images that we know the tag for, and then we give it images that we don't know the tag for, and we ask it, well, give us the tags. In particular, <clears throat> there are new forms of machine learning, which we want to talk about a little bit more that we ended up using. There's a form of machine learning called deep learning. And deep learning is based on the idea of a convolutional neural network. And so to go through that, I will go through this image really quickly. So the idea of machine learning in general is that you take an image and then you calculate a number from it and from that number you say, well, is it in category A or category B or category C? But the problem is that images are a lot more complex. If, we, if we're just looking at the slide, right, the slide is an image onto your eye, but it also has, but within the image you have words, you have like squares, you have squares arranged in various rows and columns. So there's a lot more complexity in the image. And so what deep learning does is it takes the image, from this image it extracts a set of numbers. Not just one number, but a set of numbers. From the set of numbers it generates another set of numbers, and then from those set of numbers another set of numbers. And finally at the end after multiple layers you get a final set of numbers and then a final number which you can then use. <clears throat> so still it's one number at the end, but as you went through the network, you were able to capture a lot more detail and a lot more features. And that is what makes deep learning so powerful. And you might've heard of deep learning from recent, <coughs> sorry, uh, recent uh, discoveries that Google has made. So a couple months ago, you may have heard that Google supercomputer, which used deep learning beat the world's best Go player using minimal training. And that was using just an off-the-shelf convolutional neural network. And convolutional neural networks, which I'll abbreviate as CNNs from now on, CNNs have been the gold standard in image classification over the past five years. And so we figured we'll use CNNs to classify the British Library data set. Great idea, right? So for our project, we found 12 categories that we thought were representative of the data set. Text, seals, people, objects, nature, miniatures, maps, landscapes, diagrams, decorations, architecture, and animals. You can see that on the left-hand side. And we classified every single image into those tags. The accuracy that we got was very surprising. Very surprisingly good. We got 81% accuracy, meaning four out of five images got the tag that we expected it to get in our 1000 image test set, meaning we tagged those by hand. Those are the ones that we validated on. It's pretty good. But what was more interesting was that we also measured the top three accuracy, meaning we took, we asked whether the right tag was in the three tags that the, Im that the computer thought was most likely for that image. And we got 97% accuracy, meaning 97% of images, the computer thought the right tag was within the top three tags. And that boosted our confidence in this model and made us think that, well, we can use the CNN to actually provide useful information for the people that are going to be studying the British Library data set. Our next step is to put the most confident tags on the Flickr. So again, you remember Flickr had a lot of tags which described how big the image was, where it came from, what year it was published, etc. But what we want to do is to put our tag on Flickr. This image, the CNN thinks is 80% likely it's people, 12% architecture, 5% animal, etc. For the most confident images, we want to put that tag on Flickr. And so even though that's not 
even though there are 200,000 images for people, at least it provides some sort of information as to what the image is. <clears throat> okay, so that's step two. Within the goals of this project, which we'll be focusing on over the next few months, we want to extend this to more interesting results. The first step is, well, how do we know that the 12 tags that are on the left here are the most useful tags? What if, for example, within people, we want to know, is it a man or a woman? Is it a king in the middle or is it a farmer, etc.? <clears throat> how do we know that the tags we have are useful? And obviously, we need a lot more. One thing that we will do is to use the surrounding text around the word, around the picture, to get a better set of words. So one amazing resource that the British Library has is that they, uh, they computerized all the text around every single image so that it's easily, uh, easily subject to analysis. And so what we want to do is to find the words that are around each image and use that as sort of a set of 5,000 words or 1,000 words that better captures the vocabulary and what's interesting at the time. And then we will use those as tags for the image around it. And what's also interesting is that the words around the image are more likely to correspond to the image than other words in other books. And so that would give us better accuracy in our tagging. And we plan to put that onto Flickr also. Okay, so again, now we've gotten to not just tagging with 12 categories, but tagging with hundreds or maybe a thousand contemporary words <clears throat> that would be more useful for historians, more useful for the general public. But if you think about it, when we think about an image, we don't think about images as sets of words, but we think of a phrase that tells a story about the image. For example, I'm going to jump to this slide. <clears throat> this image, we don't think of man, woman, tree, ship. Our mind constructs a man and a woman below the tree next to a ship. We want to enable that. That is our ultimate goal for the British Library dataset. We want to provide a caption for every single image. To do that, we want to use a neural network architecture that is not just a CNN, but also a thing called RNN, Recurrent Neural Network, which instead of generating tags, generates sentences that have grammar and syntactical structure. Surprisingly, this actually works really well um, for certain sets of images. There's a lot of research in the field, and the research and the discoveries are coming uh, our, our uh, discoveries are being made very quickly. What we want to do is to provide a proof of concept that we can capture in the British Library data set. And this is a pretty ambitious goal, we would say, for the next few months. But we, <coughs> sorry. But we think that we can provide at least uh, a proof of principle that we can provide more useful captions uh, than tags. Okay, and now for the most important part, step five. All of this is useless if the public cannot access the tags and captions. We know that public engagement is a very important part of the British Library's overall strategy and overall part of its mission. And we're very excited to also build a public web interface so that people can explore all the tags and captions that we will, uh, that will generate for every image. We want to make it Google Images for the British Library data set. We want to make every image searchable. We want to make it taggable. We want to provide descriptive text for every single image. We also want to provide information about how our CNNs work. So maybe what was the second most likely tag? What was the third most likely tag? Uh, what was another caption that the computer considered when it was building, when it was generating captions for the image? We want to be able to provide that for the public to see. Okay, so I've gone through a lot of ideas as to what our project will entail for the next few months, and I want to summar summarize it for all of you. Our goal is to automatically annotate every image in the British Library collection with multiple layers of text. One layer will be tags, which are 
words that describe parts of the image. We also want to provide proof of concept that we can caption the data set, meaning provide a phrase that describes the image, tells a story about the image. With the captions, we can pull out words to get even better tags. We'll be using a cool new technology called convolutional neural networks or deep learning in order to make these tags and captions. So we'll be doing a lot of cutting edge research. And finally, and most importantly, we want to surface all of this information online as a public web interface. We think that this will be an incredibly exciting project, not only for us in terms of building it and applying our software engineering and algorith algorithmic uh, skills learned at Stanford, but also this will be incredibly useful for the general public, for people to see and explore the British Library data set, not just through scrolling through it, but also knowing what they want to find and being able to find it in a new way. And historians who will be using the British Library data set for research that we can't even begin to think about. We're really excited for what we can do and we're extremely grateful for all of your support. And so I'd like to finally thank everyone who's been involved in this project so far. <coughs> uh, the British Library has been instrumental from the beginning in providing us with a data source providing us with initial expertise as to how to look at the data and how to think about the data. And in terms of coming up with this proposal, um, coming up with, with the ideas behind this proposal and helping us slim it down to things that seem feasible. Specifically, Mahendra Mehi in British Library Labs, Adam Farquhar, Hannah Lewis, Adrian Edwards, Elliot Crowley, Mario, Mario Klingeman. And at Stanford, our professors for the class that we took in deep learning Andre Karpathy, and Justin Johnson. Um, finally, I'll go back to this slide, which has our emails at the bottom, so that if there are any questions, we know that unfortunately we can't take questions uh, live, but we would be extremely happy to get questions and suggestions for all, from all of you, if there are any. So our emails are at the bottom. Please feel free to contact us. Uh, we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for your attention, and we hope to see you sometime in person in November. Thanks, and bye.